Hello, my name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, November the 19th. We will sing a few songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be useful, edifying, and beneficial. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you have that book, it's great. I will give you the number and the name of the song. And um, if you don't have that book and you want to sing with us, uh, if you have another book or you can Google the song, uh, I welcome you to do so. The first song that we will sing is number 97. The title of this song is I Sing Praises. I Sing Praises. 97, I Sing Praises. <clears throat> I sing praises to your name, O Lord, praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord, praises to your name. O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O oh Lord, glory to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord, glory to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, that was a beautiful song. I enjoyed it. 83, God is so good. Probably a lot of you know these words by heart. God is so good. 83. <clears throat> God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. He cares for me, He cares for me. Supper, we will sing number 335 in memory of the Savior's love. 335 in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> he 
In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast. Where every humble contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner, thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate my faith, the heavenly feast It is the time in our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, the song uh, says a lot about the Lord's Supper and about our attitude about the Lord's Supper. It says that we take it in the memory of our Savior's love. It says that it is a sacred feast, and we are the welcome guest to partake in that sacred feast. And so as we break the bread, we see the bread as the bread of life. And as we drink the cup, we drink the cup in token of the blood that Jesus shed for us. He shed it for the sinners of the world. And so, you know, we, we sing. We sing praises to the Lord. We sing of the wonders of his love. And uh, the wonders of his love are all wrapped up in Jesus not only coming to earth, uh, living the perfect life, teaching as no man has ever taught, and finally dying as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Um, why do we do this? Because this is the feast that we partake of here on earth every Lord's day as we are instructed to do. However, our anticipation is the heavenly feast that we have awaiting us. The church is God's kingdom here on earth. However, we all anticipate living eternally with God. Uh, that is the heavenly feast. So as we gather about the table, we remember Jesus' body. We remember the blood that was shed for us. And each first day of the week, in memory of the Savior's love, we take this sacred feast. Let's uh, take a few moments to realize the significance of the bread and of the fruit of the vine. Let's pray for the bread, the body of our Lord. We're just so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, in your infinite wisdom that you sent Jesus to us at the right time you sent him into a sinful world to live a perfect life. And you sent him into a sinful world to die the perfect death as a sacrifice for each of us as sinners. We're grateful that Jesus was willing to endure what he did, that he took the sins of the world on him, and that through uh, his death that we can celebrate life Bless us as we partake of the bread. We do this in his most gracious and holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Help us to understand 
dear God, that this fruit of the vine is a token of the blood of Jesus, and it was shed for us as sinners. Help us to understand the gravity of this and to understand that it is only through the blood of Jesus that our sins can be washed away. So as we partake of the fruit of the vine, let's remember the soul-cleansing blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, we take this short amount of time to remember that uh, we also, on the first day of the week, are to have laid by in store during the week so that we can give back to the Lord's kingdom here on earth, that is the church. The church has an evangelical uh, aspect to it. Uh, it is uh, reflected in the Great Commission when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the word of God. It is the church that does that. We do that through what we stand for. We do that through our evangelistic efforts. We do that by supporting works that are not close to ours, but that we know are active and helping to save souls. So as we give, remember the purpose of our giving. Let's pray. We thank you both for the opportunity uh, to give, and uh, we thank of the privilege that we have to give back. Help us to always earmark that which we have been prospered, to understand that the only way that the Lord's kingdom here on earth will grow is through our efforts, and some of those efforts are monetary. Help us to understand that and help the leaders of our kingdom here on earth to use these monies wisely so that your work here on earth will be accomplished. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing before the lesson is number 792. 792. The title of this song is My Eyes Are Dry. My eyes are dry. <clears throat> My eyes are dry. My faith is old. My heart is hard. My prayers are cold. And I know how I ought to be. Alive to you and dead to me. What can be done to an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you. Your spirit of love, please wash me anew in the wine of your blood. I hope you enjoyed singing with us. Uh, I know the Lord was praised, and I know that I felt better. I felt better giving praise to our mighty God. Uh, this is the Lord's day, and uh, through our worship this morning, uh, we did uh, almost essentially what we are doing this evening. We prayed, uh, we got into the Lord's word, we observed the Lord's supper, and we gave back to the Lord. And so this is our evening service. This is the service uh, that... Uh, we are not necessarily required to do, but we know that uh, the Lord's people gathered together on the first day of the week. And we're so fortunate to have this modern medium of YouTube that even though we are not physically gathered together, 
that we are able to come together and uh, enjoy one another's fellowship in uh, learning more of our wonderful God and his son, Jesus. If you were there this morning, you know that uh, I told you the title of our lesson this evening uh, would be the outer and the inner. The outer and the inner. If that sounds a little provocative to you, I hope it does, because I think I have a few very, very important things to share with you this evening. Each of us lives in, basically, in two worlds, in two realms. We live in the physical realm, and we live in the spiritual realm. Now, you know what? We are humans. We are flesh and blood humans. We breathe, we walk, we talk. We do things each and every day. We eat, we drink, we sleep, we play. And sometimes, sometimes we allow the physical world to dominate us because we're surrounded by the physical world. And, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. We live in this physical world, and this physical world is the creation of our God. He gave it to us to live within it. And it is the physical aspect of this world that keeps us functioning. It keeps our physical bodies functioning. The rest that we get, the food that we eat, <clears throat> what we drink, how we take care of our bodies is all about the physical. And by the way, <clears throat> that's okay. We do live in this physical realm, but there is a greater challenge for each of us as Christians. Our greatest challenge brings the greatest reward. And that reward is to make us focus on the spiritual realm of our lives. And if we are able to do this, no matter what hardship befalls us physically, no matter what hardship, we can say that God is with us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, the Apostle Paul wrote these words. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is renewed day by day. You know, it has been said, and probably said well, that the moment that we are born into this world, our body starts decaying. Oh, we spend, oh, 14, 15, 16 years of our lives in growth. And then that physical growth, at least part of it, stops. Some of the growth continues. We grow hair and we uh, uh, replace certain cells of our body. We can replace skin cells and so forth. If we break a bone, our bodies can make new bone cells. We understand that. But here's what I think we need to understand. We will not faint or lose faith or determination in our lives. We will not give up because the physical isn't working so well. Because the physical is temporary while the spiritual is eternal. And so as we age, I added a, a you know, numerically a year to my life last year, uh, last week on the 12th of this month. And I truly understand 
especially in that I, I spent uh, much of my younger years in athletics, I understand that my body just cannot do the things that it used to do. And so when we are called to mature, we're called to mature spiritually. When we talk about growth in Christians, the growth that we talk about is spiritual growth. Now, in this scripture, uh, Paul talks about the outer man. All right, the outer man. That's our physical body. And the text says it is decaying. The Greek literally means changing for the worst. <laughs> That's what decay actually means. It means to corrupt or consume bodily. It consumes our vigor. It consumes our strength. We find as we get older, we can't run as fast. We can't lift as much weight. Uh, we can't do physically as much work as we could when we were younger. And so there is an enigma here. And that enigma is that we put so much time, effort, and money into that which is going to return to dust. Now, please don't get me wrong. Take care of your physical bodies. From a physical standpoint, it's all that you have here on earth. And I'm not going to give you a lesson about taking care of your physical bodies. I think all of us understand that. But the more difficult thing to understand, I believe, is our inner man. That's our soul. It is who we are. It is the part of us that when we pass from God's kingdom here on earth through death to God's kingdom of eternity, of eternity, it's the part of us that will go to eternity. And the realization that this is where we must spend our time. This is where we must spend our effort. This is where we must spend our money. Our efforts ought to keep the inner man growing. Now, I told you already, the outer man ceases to grow. It breaks down. <clears throat> we are called to maturity. We are called to be the best spiritual people that we can possibly be. And that is a renewal. It happens moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day. So in contrast to what happens to the outer man, Paul says our inner man is renewed day by day. It says something is happening to our inner man. We're not being, we're not doing the acting we are being acted upon. The hardships that we go through cause the inner man to be renewed. James tells us, blessed are those who suffer hardship because in their perseverance, they become stronger. And so the renewing of our spirit is contrasted to the decaying of the physical body. Renewed, Greek-wise, means to cause to grow up. So the first part of the Greek word for renewed means new, renewed. That's what is our spiritual life. Thus, we are going through changes to be renewed in spiritual strength and spiritual vigor. It, 
it produces for each of us literally a new kind of life. Each day, we should be getting better and better. Day by day indicates that our renewal, and that's what Paul says, it says your inner man is being renewed day by day. Now, granted, you know, sometimes in life, it, it seems as if we take three steps forward and then two steps backwards. But in the long run, the inner man is making progress and is growing. Therefore, the beginning of our scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, do not lose heart. That being said, let's spend the remainder of this lesson on the how. How can we be renewed? Well, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we have a familiar passage. The passage says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, you ready, by the renewing of your mind, so that you can prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. This is what Paul says we are to be striving for. The physical world with its lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life will always be there. But we are called to be spiritually renewed. We can't allow the physical parts of life to pull us away from those important spiritual parts. Our battle is not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed. And it explains it by the renewing. There is a renewal. It means to grow, literally to grow up. And so we're transformed by the renewing of our minds each day. And I know sometimes it's a tough concept. Each day that we wake up is a new day. And each day calls on us to refocus on what is important in our life. And what is important and is of the premium importance is the inner man rather than the outer man. Each day, each day, we reconnect with God by letting him talk to us through his word. Talk to us. This is God talking to us through his word and us talking to him through our prayer. The inner man will be strengthened by this. And the outer man's grip on our life is going to be weakened. Now, please understand, the physical part of this life is important. We want to feel good physically. I, I'm not decrying that. This is important. But the physical world offers so many temptations and pitfalls that we can't allow ourselves to fall into. And how does that happen? By not conforming to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our minds. All right, if you're listening to this, you can hold your hand up if you want to. How many of you know where the thermostat is in your home or your apartment where you live? Okay, you know what it is. It's getting chilly now. You know, it's, it's the third week of November. Okay, the temperatures are going down. And so we pay attention to that thermostat. How do we know when we have to do something with the thermostat? Well, we do it partially by what we feel, 
tactilely. You know, we feel cold or chilly. But <coughs> the thermostat has a thermometer attached to it. The th thermometer tells us how warm or cold it is in our home. Now, understand this. The thermometer conforms to its surroundings. If we leave our front door opened and it's cold outside, we'll look at the thermometer and we will see the temperature drop because the temperature is affected by the surroundings. We focus on our spiritual lives when we act like the thermostat instead of like the thermometer. What do I mean? The thermostat has the control. The thermostat determines when we push the little buttons that we need to push, that we can now change the temperature. We have the control. That's the thermostat. And so if we allow temperature to control us, it's like the outer man being a thermometer. That means not being controlled by anything. Just the outside influences are what make the difference. We lose our control, but when we're the thermostat, when we're the thermostat, we reflect what our surroundings are and we make a change. And so the question is, do you want to be the thermometer or do you want to be the thermostat? The thermometer is at the whim of what is ever outside. The thermostat is what changes. And that's what we are spiritually. Don't be transformed to this world. Don't be the thermometer. Be the thermostat. Don't be conformed to this world. All right? But be renewed. All right? Be renewed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then we will have that control because we will utilize what we need to take control of our lives. I hope this lesson about the outer and the inner was beneficial to all of us and that we spend some time in reflection upon it. It is important uh, to understand how powerful our spiritual lives are. Our spiritual lives, our soul, is what will live with God eternally. In order to do that, we must uh, enter into the state of salvation. Salvation comes when we obey God into salvation. After having heard the word and believing it, we confess Jesus as the Son of God. We repent of our former lives. We don't allow the temperature to control us. And we are baptized for the remission of our sins. And then our walk begins. If you have not taken that step, we invite you this evening. Uh, call us, uh, get in touch with us, and we will be there to help you to become a child of God. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, help us as we reflect on this lesson to understand how important the inner man is. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, not to be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Help us to understand how important the physical aspect of our life is, but even how much more important the spiritual aspect of our lives it is. Help us to grow in spirit each day. Help us to renew ourselves each day in you. We're so grateful for the time that we have together. We just pray that uh, this this was beneficial to each of us when we get into the Lord's word and we understand what the Lord would have us to do with our lives. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father. 
uh, comfort us and bless us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.